Hi everyone, it's Brittany from Paper and Stitch and today I'm here with Kate Singleton of Art Hound. Hey Kate, thanks for being here today. Hi Brittany, thanks for having me. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, we should just probably just jump right into it. So can you give us a brief intro of what you do uh, with Art Hound and who you are? Sure. Uh, so I run Art Hound, which is a blog on collecting affordable art, which I started uh, a little over a year and a half ago. And I also have a an art consulting business, um, which is also part of Art Hound. I do a lot of consulting remotely, so also um, you know a, a lot of online. A lot of it is online, um, and. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Well, how did you get started with Art Hound? Because we've talked about that before, and I, I liked your story. I think it's similar to how a lot of people get started with blogging. So can you tell us about that? Sure. I mean, I wish I could say that I thought of the idea of starting a blog or that I knew that that was what I should do, but that it's not true. Um, I, you know, sort of a time in my life where there was a lot of change, um, uh, the job I had suddenly ended and it was something that I hadn't you know planned to do for the rest of my life I knew that I was very interested in the online world and e-commerce and I was very interested in art and design um, but suddenly I needed to figure out what my next step was job wise and because it happened so suddenly I didn't have a very set plan and decided to sort of experiment a little and see what I you know what my options were at that point, my husband, who is a tech guy, said, why don't you start a blog? You can start you know, sharing this journey with other people, or it could be just for you, and see where it takes you. And that's, that's how our town started. Awesome. So one of the things that we kind of share, in a way, is this idea of being digital curators. And I know that's one of the ways that you identify yourself. And um, you know, it's very similar to what I do with Paper and Stitch but obviously for a blog instead. So I was wondering if you could tell everybody a little bit about being a digital cur curator for a blog and what that means to you. Sure, yeah. Um, I think it's a very interesting um, role that has really only recently developed in the last maybe 10 years since we've all become so connected to, uh, to the Internet. Um, I think you know, most people's experiences when they're looking for something or they're researching something, uh, you know, is very overwhelming, especially for goods. And it's wonderful that there are so many, there's so much art and crafts and handmade goods out there that people are selling online, but uh, it really makes it very difficult for people to figure out sort of, you know, where where the really high quality, really interesting things are. So I think there's just this enormous need for, uh, as you you know, as you call them, digital curators. Um, and I think it's something that people, you know, people sort of why people read blogs. I mean, they want, um, you know, they want someone else to tell them what are sort of the coolest, the most interesting, the craziest, you know, stories and, you know, shoes and art and whatever it is um, it's a you know it's a it's a huge undertaking I think all digi digital curators are just really passionate you have to be just super passionate about whatever it is you're you're blogging about in order to spend massive amounts of time you know doing that research is what you know that's sort of the behind the scenes that people don't really see and that's really what it takes yeah absolutely so one of the things that we've discussed before is the amount of research that you do for, you know, your blog and, and just how you find people and things like that. So research is a huge behind the scenes part of what every blogger does and it's kind of something that readers don't typically think, you know, think about all that much. <laughs> Who's that? Sorry. My cat, Yoko, making okay. an appearance. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, can you tell me just a little bit about your process as far as the research goes? Sure. I think um, I work very hard, but you could also say that I'm lazy in that I'm always trying to avoid doing work that's not necessary. And so, 
I'm always trying to find shortcuts um, and, you know, ways to use technology to help me. So um, I think, you know, it's a very, it's a very simple thing, but um, mailing lists are, uh, you know, are really great. I, um, I'm on the mailing list of, I don't even know how many galleries, but that for me is something that's really um, awesome because I can't, and even all, and also an art, you know, artists that I that I follow who I really who I really like, I'll be on their mailing list, and that's you know awesome because I find out you know when the artist has um, has a show that's about to open, or the gallery has a new show that's about to open, and it's of these ten people, and um, it's it's so easy just to be able to see that in your inbox and uh, check it out and see if it's of interest. Um, that for me is a way of avoiding uh, checking into all of these galleries and artists' blogs. I um, sort of track or have my on you know close to 800 artists, and that you know that's that list is uh, that number is always growing. So I couldn't possibly check out their blogs every week. So yeah. I, I look for ways um, like that to. Uh, to give me sort of highlights and, you know, Facebook too. Um, and I obviously, I love it when artists reach out and let me know that something cool is going on or just to say hi, that always, you know, that's always great. Yeah. And I like your tip about, you know, uh, the mailing list, especially that's something that really anybody could do no matter what yeah. it is that they're blogging about, you know, let the content kind of come to you sometimes and then, you know, filter through it instead of having to actually seek it out all of the time. You know, when it's coming into your, into your inbox, it's so much easier than having to go through, you know, five to ten blogs or search through Etsy or, you know, Google searches or whatever to try to find new people. And the mailing list that you're on are probably very similar aesthetic to what you go for anyway, so that's really helpful. And and anyone can really do that for whatever niche that they're in. So, great tip. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the other thing I do is, I mean, I'm, I obviously check out a lot, a lot of different blogs. And I guess you know the other tip I have is um, I you know sort of keep blogs categorized into maybe the ten or so that I absolutely you know love and and check out daily and the longer list which is maybe somewhere between 50 and 100 um, I only check out on a weekly basis and I know that that's anathema for some bloggers they have to check out you know all their blogs are you know they they have all the RS uh, they're all their RSS feeds coming in but for me I I try to separate uh, content that way so I don't get overwhelmed which I mean otherwise I would be very very overwhelmed all the time <laughs> yeah and that that there's so much content out there it's really easy to get overwhelmed with information or you know whatever it is that you're looking at so that's a, a great way to do it too and kind of just sort of separate them out manu manually so that you know that you're not gonna have to spend hours sort of filtering through every day having a schedule yep. for going through those types of things is, is really helpful to kind of stay on track and do what you need to be doing Totally. Working for yourself, one of the challenges that I have personally had is, you know, struggling to stay on task at times and things like that. So you've obviously worked out some systems for that already, like you talked about with the different folders and everything. What are some of the struggles that you've had um, with working for yourself and being a, a blogger? Anything, any challenges that you face that stick out in your mind? Uh, there are many, but um, we don't have you know, tons of times. So I'll just focus <laughs> on a biggie for me, which has been, um, sort of figuring out what my, you know, what it is that I'm doing. Um, it's sort of, you know, often this big question mark, you know, I think there's a wish that we all have that we could just, and, you know, encapsulate what we do in like one short sentence and say, you know, I'm an accountant or, um, I, you know, I'm a mailman or, you know, just, it, I think there's always sort of a, uh, a desire that, that um, we could sum things up so easily. Um, I, I found that it's just it's been an ongoing journey for me with Art Hound. Um, you know, first realizing that I loved blogging um, and that it was a really good medium for me. Uh, I'm not a writer. Uh, I'm part you know I'm a part digital curator. I'm um, 
part blogger, part art consultant, you know, sort of a little, um, little bit of a lot of different things. And just for me personally, uh, being open enough and being flexible with myself to, um, to let myself be creative. I didn't come from a creative background and I came from a job which was very well defined. So at first I was very uncomfortable for me. And now I realize that I think there's a whole generation of people um, who don't, who, who, you know, they're, they're a designer, they're a blogger, they're an artist, uh, they're a DJ, you know, you name it, the list goes on and on and on, um, that, you know, I'm certainly not alone with that and that's okay. It's sort of the way, quite frankly, things are, you know, things are changing. Yeah, and I think so many people can identify that, you know, that everybody is so many things, whether you are a blogger or not, I mean, you might be a business owner and a mom and, you know, maybe you occasionally blog and maybe you do art consulting on the side, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, to, to anyone, not even in this, in this blogging realm. So adding the sort of blogging portion to it kind of adds a different aspect, I guess, in the way that the term blogger is a little bit obscure. And when you tell people like sort of outside of that community, what do you do? Oh, I'm a blogger. You know, I mean, that's a pretty generic term. And a lot of people might be a little confused by that. And you're so right. There's so many things to what all of us do. And, and definitely as small business owners, it's hard to um, convey that to others sometimes. Totally. And that is definitely part of the struggle. Um, so you, you said before that you've been doing Art Hound for about a year and a half or so. And what I wanted to briefly talk to you about is some of the strategies that you've used to build up Art Hound over the last year and a half. If you have like maybe any tips that you could share with people that are just starting out or, or just share a little bit of your story just real quick. Not sure. to rush you, but. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. So strategies. Um, I mean, I've, I've. Uh, you know, my philosophy from day one has been to, um, you know, to try to, to have the blog and how I go about it to be really true to who I am um, as a person and um, just to feel that there's a lot of, a lot of integrity there. So um, I think, you know, it took me a long time. I didn't start, I didn't, you know, officially start offering art consulting services until Art Hound was almost a year old. And in that period of time, I was really sort of figuring out how do I, um, you know, how do I make a living from this and do it in a way where I'm really uh, going to provide a service or a product to my readers um, that they really need and want and are going to be really happy about. Um, so I think, uh, I don't know, I mean, you get a, you get a lot of advice from people about, you um, just promoting yourself like crazy and I and I don't necessarily subscribe to that model I much prefer I think doing something really uh, um, with a lot of integrity uh, and passion is you know how you get you know how you're successful in the long term yeah and I one of the things we don't have time to talk about it but one thing I wanted to mention that you've been really unique with doing and sort of finding your own path for is the art consulting that you do um, to generate income for for art hound what you know because the the money maker side of things is really the art consulting and um, the for sale for by artists yeah. section that you have and um, so I just wanted to mention that and everybody needs to check it out I'll have a link at the bottom of this video for everyone to check out you know what it is that you're doing there because I'd love to talk to you more about that but we're almost out of time so I wanted to make sure that I was able to um, just ask you what do you think the future holds for Art Hound is there anything specific that you see happening in the future for what you're doing uh, well in your term I have um, an apartment tour coming out uh, in the next month or so. I'm not sure what site that will be on, but that's something that I'm really excited about um, to you know, be able to share my collection with other people. And the long term, it's really sort of a question mark. I will still you know, be very much involved in the online art community, specifically how, I'm not sure.